A mass of cold air sits high over the water and the surrounding warm moist air gently flows up into it. But sometimes the upward flow becomes a rush, the moisture in the air becomes rain and the whole system begins to spin faster and faster. And when that happens, a tropical cyclone is born. On the morning of the 20th of March 2006, a Category 5 cyclone crossed the North Queensland coast. Wind gusts devastated buildings and crops. Despite the trail of destruction it left behind, Cyclone Larry did not take any lives. But we are not always so lucky. Cyclone Althea raged through Townsville in 1971, killing four people and causing property damage estimated at $80 billion. And just as I went to walk away, the wall caved in. I had everything so lovely for Christmas, but never mind, we'll, we'll start again. It is not just the coast that suffers. Lying directly in the cyclone's path is a coral reef. At the point of impact, the cyclone tears through the reef like a chainsaw, pulverising whole colonies and producing an explosion of coral fragments that cuts through the reef like shrapnel. When it reaches the coast, the cyclone drenches the land with torrential rain, washing soil into rivers and creeks and finally into the sea. Inshore corals are smothered by sediment and damaged by the excess fresh water. What seems like the end of the story is just another chapter in the epic saga that has taken millions of years to tell. Devastating storms have happened again and again over millions of years. Yet each time the reefs have slowly rebuilt themselves. However, a warming climate is likely to interfere with this natural cycle of devastation and rebirth. Most climate models suggest that the frequency, severity and duration of tropical cyclones is likely to increase into the future.